students actually we have done one uh, session previously it was i think uh, two months back i could not do another session because of two reasons first of all there was ins is coming in between so uh, we gave time for that and i had to prepare for the recall of those things plus i personally had some issues like i had an exam to attend so i was uh, behind that and an exam and uh, interview was there so i was behind that so in last session my plan is like this two sessions we will uh, do the stroke and later on we'll bring some other cases like uh, some short cases some interesting cases we'll bring so last time we discussed most of the cases we discussed uh, were purely interventional purely uh, more of more of image based and uh, some atypical presentations and all this time it is more of a clinical type i have tried to introduce some of the clinical videos into it and some of the not the plain clean fair cases some some different cases that is a basic idea to 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 provoke some interest in uh, like evoke some interest in uh, neurology and how, how to elicit the clinical things that is something which uh, is the best part of neurology so we'll start with uh, so now there is around 117 attendees right so we will start with the first case uh, this is a 52 year old male referred from outside hospital with history of visual blurring and vertigo since two days non case of hypertension and diabetes came to casual so It's a patient who complains of visual blurring. Whenever the patient has a visual blurring, uh, you should consider the first possibility is something which involving in a neurologist point of view. Visual blurring means it may be the either an optic nerve, or it can be the visual pathway or the occipital cortex, or this can be a diplopia because diplopia also sometimes can present with visual blurring. And third is. Uh, visual blurring is a quite common thing which the it is it's more of a subjective thing the patient tell visual blurring but when you examine when you take detailed history this may be just say uh, what i that also will uh, you you will see the because colloquially in certain areas especially in kerala and all they will tell the same thing uh, like visual blurring or what i go is actually again something which is so much confusing uh, especially for uh, we indians like for everything if you will tell as what i go if it is uh, blackout or if it is true or tego or even if it is other symptoms anything affecting the vision any even feeling of imbalance everything in india we used to call it as what i go those patients will tell in hindi maybe chakkar in malayalam tale chutta uh, in uh, tale sutta in uh, all those things we used to tell the uh, patients used to tell so what i go is actually very subjective you know so the patient has been referred as what i go the patient was telling like something like chakkar that is a patient's on board so this patient was two two days history so came to casualty and uh, there was one examination they told that there is no finding because of the er they told that there is no finding and my uh, junior also has been seen junior is actually mbb resident who has actually seen the patient told that sir is thought there is no cerebellar signs and whenever you see vertigo the first thing you should make sure is whether its positional command is there or not second is uh, how much the duration of the vertigo third is whether it is first of all before going into that first thing is you have to find out is whether it is a true vertigo or not whether it is a blackout blackout means it is more of a pre syncopal symptoms or whether it is a swaying to one side swaying is predominantly ataxia or imbalance it's not a true vertigo and third is a true vertigo and old school teaching is like true vertigo means the surrounding is rotating it's not like that now it is something known as introceptive feeling or extroceptive feeling vertigo is feeling of movement of surrounding when there is no actual movement is there it can be introceptive or extroceptive you feel the environment is moving that is extroceptive what we previously called it as true vertigo introceptive is when you feel yourself is wobbling that is introceptive and vertigo is not a bidirectional movement it is in multi direction it is not a up and down or side and side movement it is something which is more of a rotatory type that is what is the actual definition of vertigo so uh, my resident has seen and told that there is there is not much finding and uh, this patient uh, uh, is a hypertension and diabetes obviously there's a risk factor for stroke came to casualty and we had done uh, an, an mri and this is a mri video you can see this is a diffusion weight mri i had discussed last time that diffusion weight mri you can identify because uh, it looks like flyer and i had discussed what is flyer t2 t1 everything in last session so this is a diffusion weight mri where you won't see a skull that clearly an acute infarct will well seen in diffusion weight mri so diffusion weight mri was normal there was nothing was there and this patient came in the morning uh, so i was doing the rounds so that time the patient came and mri from the mri room they i went to the mri room and there was nothing in the diffusion weight mri so i have 
nothing was there in the other MRI source. So the patient complains of vertigo and nothing was there in the MRI. So I went ahead and history was rechecking the patient. Patient actually was not telling vertigo. That is importance of uh, uh, importance of taking a proper history. The patient's own word was that he feels whatever is in coming in his visual field is jumping, is moving up and down. He is telling anything is coming in front of me is moving up and down. So that is not actually a vertigo, because the patient's initial word was something in Malayalam is talachutur, or in Hindi it means chakkar. That was his first word he told. But when I when I when I broken the history. I ask him whether it is like something rotating or whether it is like something moving or whether you are feeling like you are getting dizzy, whether you are having black, uh, blackout or whether there is a positional component. He told there is no positional component at all. But whenever he is looking, uh, all objects in front of him is dancing up and down. So what do you call it as? What is the phenomenology? Anyone have an answer? So phenomenology is the most important one in such cases. What is the phenomenology? Anyone, anyone can type the answer in the chat box. So that phenomenology is something known as oscillopsia. Yeah, correct, oscillopsia. Oscillopsia means vertical movement, the bidirectional up and down. So his complaint was oscillopsia, not he was complaining of vertical movements like jumping or visual imaging. This is oscillopsia, rhythmic oscillation of the visual environment, where you see the environment is moving up and down. So why, my question is, why you are having uh, a rotatory feeling in vertigo, classical peripheral vertigo, and why you are having a vertical movement oscillopsia. Basically, whenever the visual imaginary is moving up and down or horizontal or whatever it is, you should have an idea that it may be because eye movement is in that direction. So what happens in peripheral vertigo is because they always, the peripheral vertigo always, always will have a torsional component, a rotatory component, a rotatory torsional component. So why the peripheral vertigo always has torsional component is because, see, uh, when you are animals, the, the, the brain has evolved from your, your birds or other animals. The eyes are placed on the sides. In apes, the eyes came to the front. In other animals, the eyes are placed on the side of the head, right? On the both sides. So whenever you tell, then you, you look at a bird who is tilting his head right and left, who is tilting the head sideways. Whenever they tilt the head, you can see that the eyes will have a torsional come. That is, that wiring is made just because these uh, animals with the long neck or those animals whose eyes are placed sideways, they when they change the head position, that visual field has to be made stationary. For that, they have a torsional component. So that peripheral wiring mechanism is same even in the apes where the eyes are anterior. So what happens is whenever you have peripheral malfunction, always there will be a torsional component. Because of this torsional component, you will feel the visual imaginary is having rotatory. The visual imaginary is having not a bidirectional thing. It is more of a rotatory thing. That is because of the nystagmus of the movement of the eyes, which is happening in a subtle level. That is what is provoking your vertigo. So here it is up and down. So I went to examine once again the patient because my idea is now it is not a peripheral vertigo. Because peripheral vertigo, you won't see such oscillopsias. Oscillopsia means it is a vertical movement. So pure vertical nystagmus or vertical dysfunction, it is not a peripheral thing. Peripheral thing always will have a torsional component. So my doubt was it is something involving the vertical thing. So this is a video of the eye field. You can see the video and comment what are you seeing. Look at the eyes carefully and what are you seeing? This is primary gaze, this is upward gaze. And then you look at the downward also. I'm going to look at the downward also. So what are you seeing here? It's not actually ocular bobbing. This is actually a jerky nystagmus. There's a vertical uh, jerky nystagmus is there. Upbeating nystagmus is there. Bobbing, and this is a very conscious patient. Very conscious patient. Well, no, no other deficit other than his complaint is just this. Uh, this diploma, you can see that the upward movement is there. So, with this, where will I localize it? If it is a vertical nystagmus in a diabetic hypertension, very acute onset. But two one day back, one day back when he was getting up his bed, he noticed having this thing. So, whenever it's not actually a direction changing nystagmus, it's actually the upbeating 
even if the downward position it is upbeating 